It's giving me last minute Halloween costume and not giving me like runway level a drag. And it looks really cheap. But it just doesn't really feel fashiony or it doesn't really feel expensive. You know my name, Neon Noir, Neon Noir, on my road to fame. I am that bitch, coming for your spot. Neon Noir, Neon Noir, now let me show you what I got. I got. Hello, my beautiful life rise. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, and I am the brightest crane in the box. If you're new here, or if you haven't already done so, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Girl, it has been a minute since I've gotten in full drag. I have been busy, but I have been keeping up and giving you the episodes every week. But today, I decided to paint myself a little bit differently because I was just feeling my oats. But enough about that. Now it is time to play my favorite game. Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of Drag Race Philippines Season 3, Episode 3, and let you know which looks are fab and fabulous and which ones are drab and awful. And make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end, where I let you know which queens had the fab and drab of the week. Move over, Cirque du Soleil, because the category this week is Peria, where the queens must give us their best interpretation of a Filipino uh, carnival-inspired look. So, without further ado, let's find out who shined bright and who faded into obscurity. First up, it's Kiana, and Kiana is coming out with a bang. That is right, she is coming out and she is showing you what this theme is. She decided for her carnival slash circus inspired look, she is gonna come out as the Circus 10. Now I think this is a really original take where a lot of queens will do games and prizes, which is what we've seen on something like Drag Race Mexico, and it's also something that we're gonna see a lot of in this runway, but she decided to go into a different direction and go with the Circus 10. She did the quintessential red and white stripes, so you immediately get it, uh, but uh, also stripes can feel very fashiony. So it really is that middle ground between like really kooky and campy, but also smart and fashionable. She's then got this hat that kind of resembles the top of the tent and these hips that kind of resemble the bottom of the tent. So it really pairs up. The other thing that she's done is she's uh, infused a lot of clownery into her. And by that, I mean shapes that you wouldn't necessarily associate with a clown, such as the big uh, bow tie and the bustle sleeves. It definitely is feeling a little bit of like that clown under the circus head. But what takes it from like a really good outfit that kind of is cool to a great outfit is these five faces. She's got these five masks all around her, which kind of give you this carnival, like creepy vibe, which listen, I like something that's a little bit creepy. And the thing about these sort of mask faces, we've seen it done several times. I'm thinking Black Pepper on UK, but we've never seen it done in this way. And that's what I really appreciate because everything's been done before, but how do you make it your own? And she definitely made it her own. She's got multiple faces that kind of give you like this illusion that when she turns around, she's always looking at you and she's got like eyes behind her head. I think it is super cool and definitely fits like this vibe and theme. I also love the gold trimming around the hat and the gold trimming around the, the base because it also feels a little bit like carousel like uh, because it is so wide and there's different moments going on. So it, again, feeding into the theme, but also coming together as a whole. All in all, this is pretty genius and definitely gonna be a bow. Next up, we have Angel, and Angel is coming out wearing this sort of gold frilly dress with this giant wheel behind her and this giant headpiece, and she is Bingo. Now, in the carnivals I've been to, bingo doesn't really exist, but maybe bingo is a Filipino carnival thing. So I am just gonna assume that that is correct. But we are here to talk about the outfit. Now, this outfit is basically made up of like two parts. We got the dress itself, and then we got all the accessories around it. First, let's talk about the dress. The dress is actually a beautiful, yet simple and elegant dress with a lot of frills and a lot of like a girly and energy to it. And this sort of like champagne off-white colors in this frilly material definitely makes to feel flowy and elegant all together. Now, as a dress on its own, it doesn't really say much, but what she did is added these accessories that really took this dress and made it something else. She's got this giant fan at the back that says bingo in case you didn't know what she was, and this fan really just adds dimension and campness to it, and as if there wasn't enough camp, she decided to add the bingo roller on the top of her head, and I think this is so cute and so fun. I could see so many queens 
queens wanted to do a look like this for their drag bingos because yes we all host a drag bingo once in a while and looking at this is making me think i need a bingo inspired outfit for when i do my bingos i think this is super cute super camp and it really works and that is why she is definitely gonna get a Next up, we have Zimba Ding, and Zimba Ding is coming out in this sort of bustier uh, top with this uh, little skirt and these uh, furry uh, boots. She's then paired it with tall hair and this giant stick. She said she is giving you the horse on the carousel and i got it immediately this hair is everything not only is it giving you horse mane but it's giving you horse mane in like this really cool avant-garde of way it's got the structure but it's also got these, these pieces coming out and i'm like this is impeccable hair now the dress itself is kind of like fine it is a cute little dress it works for what it needs to work for but it doesn't necessarily scream anything crazy she's then holding the pole and at first i was like what is up with this pole and then when you think about it you're like no this is the pole that goes into the horse and she's sort of giving you like this deconstructed version of it and i'm like okay i got you i see the little smartness that's going on there and then her legs have the little fur on it to kind of give you that horse a vibe personally i think that the red fur on the boots doesn't necessarily read as horse i wish it would have done you know those heels that don't have a back heel so then it would have really felt like a horse vibe or if she did want to go with this fur i think it's quite okay but i think she should have just painted it a little bit darker maybe a little bit of black maybe a little bit of wine in there just to kind of give you the same color as the hair so they match a little bit better because the hair is giving you more real and the feet are giving you more like toy so i just feel there's a small disconnect there the only other thing i would have liked to switch up is this skirt. I would have liked something a little bit more structured to give you more of that carousel vibe and maybe with some gold pieces dangling off of it to again give you more of that carousel vibe. That being said, I think this is a pretty good look. Now, when Zimbia came out on her promo look, I was not necessarily excited for her, but week after week, she is really turning it up. She's got some really interesting concepts. So I'm really excited what she's gonna do next week, but for this week, it is definitely gonna be a pop. Next up, we have Popstar Bench, and Popstar Bench is coming out as the Ferris wheel. She's coming out with uh, this giant uh, gold uh, Ferris wheel all around her. She's then got this uh, red and white uh, striped uh, bodysuit with this red and white striped boot cover, and she's paired it with red hair. Now, I think the idea of a Ferris wheel is really cute, it's really camp, and it really works. Uh, but immediately as she comes out, I'm thinking to myself, why is this Ferris wheel in front of her face? It feels like she's kind of like, holding this ferris wheel as opposed to being this ferris wheel and that's really a shame because when you look at the construction of this garment it really looks really well done i think that the whole thing really works together except for the fact that you don't see her and girl if i'm going to be a drag queen i want to see the drag queen not the dress the dress is definitely wearing her she is not wearing the dress uh this would have been so much better had she just taken the this ferris wheel and put it on her back then it would have been this whole like back moment uh and it would have really worked in fact she actually did this in the judging and when i saw it there i was like that's what i was saying the whole time it just really worked so much better but i'm not going to critique her on that version i'm going to critique her on the one she walked down the runway and this is where i struggle because clearly it is a good outfit but it is also done and styled in a poor way and this goes to show how much styling or can really take a garment from good to better or from bad to worse or from good to bad in this case that being said i don't think the styling takes it down so much that it's a drab it could definitely be a lot better and it's she's definitely gonna lose marks for the way she styled it however it is still gonna have to be a soft bow <laughs> Next up, we have Versex, and Versex is coming out in this mixed a pattern a dress that is flowing all the bottom. She's paired it with this sort of like orange hair, and this sort of very subtle touch of clown makeup on the face. She said that she is giving you a fashion clown. Oof, 
I didn't necessarily know that this was a clown until she said it was a clown. And then when she said it was a clown, I was like, am I buying that it's a clown or not? But before I answer that question, let's get into this look. She said that she is giving you Vivian Westwood and she's definitely making it fashion. And this definitely feels like Vivian Westwood and definitely feels like fashion. You can see that Versex really likes her fashion and Maiba wants to be known so hard as the fashion queen that she is infusing it into every single one of her looks. But the question is, is it to the detriment of the look? And for this theme, I think it is. I think there's so many ways that you can do it that it is fashion, that it doesn't need to be so campy because that's what she said. She goes, it's not camp, it's fashion. And I'm totally okay with that, but I need to be able to read what it is. Uh, if you didn't tell me it was a clown, I barely would have known it was a clown. Even her face makeup, it is so pale because she's done like this, like a uh, fashion interpretation of a clown that it really doesn't read. I think that this outfit could have helped with just some different fabric choices. Honestly, had she made this exact gown, but stuck to the traditional like clowny colors, I'm thinking like the red and white stripes, the black and white patterns, then it would have given me a little bit of that like Harley Quinn meets clown vibes, meets Vivian Westwood. And I think that would have really worked. But here she really stuck to more of the Vivian Westwood and less of the clown. So it is a little bit harder to understand. That being said, it is a really beautiful look. And this is where I struggle with someone like Versex because I always say, if you're not gonna follow the theme, you better look good doing it. And you know what? She looks good doing it. And she is that cool girl. So I get what she's wanting to be. I just wish she would have stuck to the theme. That being said, I don't think it's bad. And because I don't think it's bad, I can't drag it and so therefore I'm gonna have to go ahead and give it a five. Next up, it's Maxi, and Maxi is coming out with a look inspired by a color game. Now, I don't know exactly what color game she's referring to, but based on the look, I'm going to assume it's some sort of spinning wheel because she's got like this spinning wheel sort of hat. She's got these like little balls all over her and she's got like this colored uh, material all over her. I think this is what Versex was afraid of, is when you take an outfit and you try to do something with it and it looks really cheap. This feels like somebody trying to make a pride outfit and it just doesn't land. I think she definitely maybe got the colors right and maybe got the vibe right, but it just doesn't really feel fashiony or doesn't really feel expensive. And that's really surprising coming from somebody like Maxi. Like I said, Maxi is a queen that had some fame before coming onto the show. So I was expecting a bigger things from her and this is far too simple. The other queens have been really turning it up, but for this look, Maxi has not how i would have changed it well besides maybe changing the theme i think that one of the things that she should have done is stuck to one sort of color palette or motif or shades what i mean by this is her hat is all of the colors but in this sparkly material that then matches her like belt but then the top part here is like these uh, balls that feel like paper that are stuck together which are in more of the, like this neon color and then her whole body is more of in like this uh, fabric with this gradient on it that is is more of this pastel color. It's got a lot of multicolors, but not all the multicolors match together. You got the lighter ones, the darker ones, the brighter ones, and I feel like they're all clashing. I think had she stuck to one material, for example, the shiny stuff that she made her hat with and made the whole garment out of that, it would have looked so much cleaner and so much more put together. Right now, there's a lot of tones that are clashing. The other thing is the use of black. She's got black in the hat, which divides the colors, which I think makes the colors pop up. And I wish she would have used more black in the outfit. Imagine the whole outfit being like piped with black it would have really made the colors like just pop a little bit more and give them a little bit more of an edge and i think she should have actually paired this with black hair and it would have really all come together but as it is right now it is not for me and it's gonna have to be a drab <laughs> Next up, we have Minx Chanel, and Minx Chanel is coming out in this sort of asymmetrical uh, dress with this pattern all over it. It's got this a little red uh, frill on it. She's then paired it with this like silver top underneath, this little silver tea set on her head, and this umbrella with these monkeys hanging on from it. Immediately as she comes out, I'm thinking to myself, what is she? There is a lot going on here. She goes on to explain that she is the Piso game. Now, I personally didn't know what the Piso game was, but I was like, is this, does the Piso game have this much stuff? And she goes on to explain that she is not only the game, but she is the player and she is the prizes. And I'm like, oh, 
Now I get it. She is trying to do too much. She clearly had a lot of ideas and she probably really likes this game um, and therefore tried to show it all at once. But honestly, sometimes simplicity is the way to go. I think that she needed to lose 50% of these items and made each one of the one items that she does have on her really shine. Right now, my eye doesn't know where to look. It first looks at this one breast that has got silver, then it's got this frilly stuff, then I'm trying to read out the pattern, then I see these monkeys, then I see this teacup, and I'm like, I'm all over the place. I need my eye to focus. So I think that um, had she toned down the colors, toned down the elements, it would have really helped. All in all, it doesn't matter if I know the piece of game or don't know the piece of game, I don't like this look, and it's definitely gonna be a drab. <laughs> Next up, we have John Fedelaga, and John is coming out as the whole fair. She is coming out as the Ferris wheel. She is coming out as the carousel. She is coming out as the bingo card. She is coming out as the prizes. She is coming out as everything. Oof. Now, when this comes out, I have both a love and hate relationship with this. First up, I love all the colors. I love how big she decided to go. I love the attitude behind it. And I love that it all sort of kind of comes together with certain pieces. But what I hate about it is I think that it's a little bit too much. My eye doesn't know where to go and where to look because I'm like looking here, I'm looking there, I'm looking a little bit everywhere. The one thing about John is that their looks are so like immaculately put together that even though there's a lot going on, it doesn't feel like a yard sale. It feels like someone really took the time and decided this goes here and this goes here and this is all balanced and you know what the ferris wheel spins on top of it so i can't really hate it because it actually is really genius and you know they spent good money on it so they purposely wanted to look very cluttered and that was the vibe that they were going for and hence why i say i kind of both love and hate it all in all it's a well-constructed garment it looks expensive it's just not my particular taste overall it's a well-constructed outfit and she looks good in it and that is why she's getting a bop. Next up, we have Tita Baby, and Tita Baby is coming out in this uh, look with all of these uh, stuffed animals all stuck to her. She then paired it with red hair, this red skirt, and she's got this little balloon that she pops to go to explain that she is the balloon game and the prizes that you win with it. Now, I have seen many, a uh, many of uh, toy garments uh, made, so this was not that surprising, but that being said, a toy garment is never really a bad look I think it is quite camp and quite like interesting to look at I knew somebody was gonna be doing a sort of stuffed animal garment and Tita baby was a person to do that personally I actually don't mind that she did this I, I'm glad she's the only one to do this had there been other queens to do this then it would have felt repetitive but since she's the only one she kind of got away with it now let's look into to this outfit it really is like a corset which a bunch of stuff stuck onto it I wish it was a little bit more drawn out and by that I mean imagine this being like like a long dress cape and with all the stuffed animals to kind of like all go down and make it more of like this a regal moment. I do like this hair with it. It does really match. I wish she would have taken a little like teddy bear and put it in her hair to just really tie it up together. I think the skirt is very meh. It's kind of thrown on because it really is all about this bust. And that's why I said I think this needed to be like a long dress to really give you that moment. That being said, it is not bad. Is it great? No, it's not great, but it's also not bad. It's expected. So you don't wanna be expected on a runway. You wanna be original, but I also can't fault you for being expected. And that's why I'm gonna go ahead and give her a soft bow. Next up, we have Yudapota, and Yudapota is coming out also as the balloon target game. But unlike Tita Baby, she is coming out as the game itself. She's got this a pale uh, corset that's got all these circles on it, I guess to resemble a little balloons. And then she's got this skirt that is made with literal balloons. She's got this headpiece with sort of circular moments on top of it, again, to emulate the balloons. 
Now, this is where you'll lose me a little bit. Yudapota was one of my favorite queens. I think I gave her fabs of the week for my last couple of episodes. So to see her come out with this, I was like, girl, what happened to Yudapota? This dress feels so cheap. It literally feels like balloons you stick onto you. Now I'm from Canada and Halloween is huge in Canada. And one of like the typical looks that some girls put together very last minute is grapes, where they just take a bunch of like one colored balloons and stick them on themselves and they are great. And this is what this is giving me. It's giving me last minute Halloween costume and not giving me like runway level a drag, let alone Yudapota level drag, which is like usually next a level. I think that this is far too basic. And even if we're gonna let alone the basic, I also just don't think these colors work with her. They are so pale and wash her out so much. I think that had she done this look in a stronger color, maybe in like black and white, it would have really felt a little bit more interesting. But right now it really feels like your cheap balloon. This headpiece is the most interesting part about the whole look um, because it's got like this hooded piece and these pieces coming off of it but it doesn't feel like it matches with the dress. They feel like they're coming from two separate ideas. I think had she kept this headpiece with this mask, I think she needed a full bodysuit to really like cover her skin and therefore it would have really felt like one piece and maybe maybe giving you a little bit of more of that club kid vibe. Now this bustier is not bustier enough. I think had she done a bodysuit underneath, then she could have done something a little bit crazier with this bodysuit and maybe done just like a bra, for example. The skirt itself could have worked uh, had she added a lot more everywhere else. Uh, but as it is right now, it is 100% gonna have to be a drab. Next up, it's Jay Quinn, and Jay Quinn is coming out as the shooter target game. She's coming out with this giant rhinestone bullseye on her chest and all of the prizes all over. She's got red and pink teddy bears on her shoulders and all over her skirt. She's then got these sort of little pigtails with more bears in it. This is how you should do it. Now, I like that she stuck with only two or three colors and then just really multiplied it. It definitely feels like the game itself with the prizes hanging all over the place, but it also feels like put together and stylistically well done. Um, she's definitely going more with this cutesy vibe with the hair, which I think really works because she made the bears feel very cutesy as well. There's an intention there and she's definitely feeling demure. I love this little look. I think it's really cute. It really works for, for her. All in all, I'm gonna have to go ahead and give it a bye. And that is it for this week's runway. But let's get into the reason why you guys are here. You guys are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. Well, my drab of the week this week goes to... Yudapota, girl, this was the biggest shocker for me. I loved Yudapota on all the previous episodes and I don't know how she went from top all the way to bottom. I was super disappointed. And if she says, I'm expecting a big thing from her on the next episode. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week goes to... Kiana, girl, Kiana has been turning it this season. It's a little bit of that grunginess that I love, a little bit of that coolness, but also a little bit of that drag that we all love, or at least I love. Uh, I think she's doing an excellent job and I can't wait to see what she brings next. Okay, y'all, do you agree or disagree with my thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. Did I say something I shouldn't have said? Did I not understand something? Well, go let, let me know in the comments below as well. I do read all your comments and try to reply to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I would really appreciate it if you subscribe. Come on, girl, just do it. Just push that little button. Anyway, that is it for me today. My name is Neon Noir at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye bye.